the Turkish invasion and Delhi Sultanate, 1001 CE to 1526 CE. The Turkish invasion, the disintegration of the Abbasid Empire in West Asia led to the emergence of several independent states. These states were ruled by Turks who had earlier served in the armies of the Caliphs. The two important states established by the Turks were Ghazni and Ghor. Mehmud Ghazni Sultan Mehmud of Ghazni was a powerful and ambitious ruler. He invaded India 17 times between 1001 to 1025 CE. He wanted to build a large empire and needed the money to raise a powerful army to succeed. The fabulous riches of the temples of North India attracted him and he plundered its riches. He managed to succeed because of the mutual rivalries between the Rajputs in North India. Mahmud's Important Raids Mahmud first defeated Jaipal, whose territory extended from Punjab to modern Afghanistan, 1001 CE. He then defeated Jaipal's son, Anandpal, and his allies in 1008 CE. These raids proved to be destructive. After 1010 CE, Mahmud attacked temple towns as temples were treasure troves of fabulous riches. Mahmud attacked and plundered Nagarkot, Kangra, in 1009 CE, Thaneshwar, 1014 CE, Mathura and Kanauj, 1018 to 1019 CE. Hundreds of temples were plundered and destroyed. Mahmud's chief aim was to loot and plunder and not establish political control in India. The plunder of Somnath. Mahmud's most ambitious and profitable expedition was his attack on the Somnath temple in Kathiawad in 1025 CE. Mahmud returned to his capital with immense treasures. Mahmud's attack exposed the weakness of the northern states of India and paved the way for the conquest of India. After his death, the Ghaznavid empire collapsed. Muhammad Ghori was from the kingdom of Ghor in northwestern Afghanistan. He decided to conquer India and enrich his kingdom with India's wealth. In 1191 CE, Ghori attacked Prithviraj Chauhan, the Rajput ruler of Delhi and Ajmer. Prithviraj defeated Ghori in the first battle of Tarain. Ghori returned in 1192 CE and defeated Prithviraj Chauhan in the Second Battle of the Rhine and captured the throne of Delhi. Muhammad Ghori annexed more Indian territories to his empire and returned to Ghor. Mamluk Dynasty After Muhammad Ghori returned to Ghor, his viceroys Qutbuddin Ebak and Muhammad bin Bakhtiyar Khalji expanded the Ghori Empire. Ghori died in 1206 CE. The viceroys appointed by Ghori soon declared themselves independent. Qutbuddin Ebak took control of the Indian possessions and laid the foundations of the Delhi Sultanate. This dynasty, founded by Ebak, also came to be known as the Mamluk dynasty. Ebak was known to be a generous and kind ruler. In his reign, which spanned four years, he built mosques and also started building the Qutub Minar. Iltutmish Qutbuddin died in an accident in 1210 CE. His son who succeeded him was replaced by his son-in-law, Iltutmish. Iltutmish was a capable ruler. Iltutmish stabilized his position and introduced significant changes in the finance and revenue sectors. He minted gold and silver coins. He completed the Qutub Minar and was a patron of art and learning. Iltutmish nominated his daughter Razia to succeed him. Razia Sultan and Balban Razia Sultan ruled for three years. 
She was a brave and just woman. She led her armies to war and dealt with rebel leaders firmly. Though she married one of the rebel leaders, she could not manage to take back the throne of Delhi. Ghiasuddin Balban was a prominent leader of the rebel faction. He ruled the Sultanate for 20 years on behalf of Nasiruddin, a weak and inexperienced sultan. Balban ascended the throne of Delhi as a sultan in 1266 CE. He ruled with an iron fist and made the monarchy all-powerful. He strengthened the army and established a spy system. The state was economically prosperous during his reign because of peace and stability. Khilji Dynasty After the end of the Mamluk dynasty, the Khiljis came to power. The dynasty was founded by Jalaluddin Khilji in 1290 CE. He was brutally murdered by his nephew, Alauddin Khilji, in 1296 CE. Alauddin Khilji During his reign, Alauddin Khilji managed to extend the boundaries of the empire up to the Deccan. The empire reached its heights at this time. Alauddin Khilji's reforms Other than expansion and conquests, Alauddin Khilji's period also saw a number of reforms. He asserted control over the nobility. He reorganized the army and had an elaborate spy network. Alauddin Khilji introduced revenue reforms and also regulated the prices of commodities. He was a great patron of art and learning. Amir Khusro, the famous poet, was a member of his court. The Tughlaq Dynasty the period of Alauddin Khilji's rule was followed by political turmoil. After the decline of the Khilji dynasty, Ghiasuddin Tughlaq founded the Tughlaq dynasty in 1320 CE. He restored peace and stability to the state. Muhammad bin Tughlaq After Ghiasuddin's death, his son Muhammad bin Tughlaq ascended the throne in 1325 CE. He was a diligent ruler and undertook many projects. These projects were brilliantly conceived but poorly executed. Muhammad bin Tughlaq's schemes He heavily taxed the peasantry to establish a strong army. He made an unsuccessful attempt to transfer his capital from Delhi to Dalatabad in the Deccan. He also made elaborate plans to conquer Persia and Iraq but had to abandon the plan. To make matters worse, he introduced a token currency to deal with the financial crisis without taking any steps to make minting of coins a monopoly of the government. This caused further problems in the economy. His failed plans severely depleted the country's resources. Firoz Shah Tughlaq The result of Muhammad bin Tughlaq's schemes was that the dynasty lost credibility and the treasury was exhausted. As a result, rebellions broke out throughout the country. Muhammad bin Tughlaq was succeeded by his cousin Firoz Shah Tughlaq in 1351 CE. Firoz Shah Tughlaq was a just and fair ruler. He is remembered for his welfare schemes. He introduced significant changes in the economic and judicial system. He was a patron of learning and architecture. He built many towns and buildings of public utility, such as schools and colleges. However, he lacked the basic qualities of a military leader and was unable to recover the independent provinces. The End of the Tughlaq Dynasty The death of Firoz Shah in 1388 CE was followed by the disintegration of the Delhi Sultanate. The final blow to the Sultanate was dealt by Timur Lain, the Mongol ruler of Samarkand in Central Asia. Timur invaded India in 1398-99 CE. He returned to Samarkand with his Indian loot as he had no ambitions of ruling India. When he left India, Timur left behind Khizra Khan as his viceroy. Khan overthrew the last Tughlaq ruler and established the Sayyid dynasty in 1414 CE.
the Sayyid and Lodi dynasties. The Sayyids ruled for 38 years, after which the Lodi rulers from Afghanistan established their rule in India. The Lodi dynasty was founded by Behlul Lodi in 1451 CE. The most famous of the Lodi rulers was Sikandar Lodi. He was succeeded by the arrogant and impulsive ruler Ibrahim Lodi. Ibrahim Lodi was killed by Babur, the founder of the Mughal dynasty in 1526 CE during the Battle of Panipat. This marked the end of the Delhi Sultanate and the beginning of a period of Mughal rule in India.